So today we're going to be doing the synthesis of the aspirin. Uh, this reaction is an, is an acid catalyzed exhalation reaction between uh, salicylic acid and acetic anhydride. The acid catalyst we're going to be using is phosphoric acid. Uh, we'll be running this reaction at 90 degrees uh, Celsius for about 15 minutes. What we're going to form is this type of ester right here. It's, it's acetyl salicylic aspirin, or acetyl, acetyl salicylic acid, which is also known as aspirin. And then we'll also form acetic acid as a byproduct. So the way this mechanism works is first the acetic anhydride will get protonated here from the acid catalyst. Once you get this uh, protonated oxygen right here, this, uh, this carbon right here becomes uh, much more open for this attack from this oxygen. So we'll form this kind of intermediate right here with this positive uh, oxygen from the OH group. Uh, so next what's going to happen is the conjugate base of our uh, phosphoric acid is going to deprotonate this oxygen right here, yeah, this oxygen right here, reform the uh, catalyst. Uh, we'll satisfy that positive charge. Next what's going to happen is this pi bond right here is going to recollapse and kick up this uh, like acetate leading group. So right here we're almost done. We have this positively charged oxygen. We have this uh, like acetic acid uh, conjugate base. So it's going to deprotonate it here. This will satisfy the positive charge. We'll form aspirin and then acetic acid. So uh, that's pretty much it for the mechanism. For the workup, we're just going to do recrystallization to get the solid out. And then for the analysis in the second video, we're going to do a uh, spectroscopic analysis to see how pure it is. And then we'll also take the bumping point. Um, so we are, like I said, we are using salicylic acid, acetic anhydride, and uh, phosphoric acid. And we'll just make uh, aspirin and then acetic acid. Hello, welcome to the aspirin lab. So in here I would like to give you a little bit more information about the what is the aspirin. So this is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug which is comes in NS8 uh, class of drugs. And this is also used as a blood thinner and used to treat the pain and fever and headache and inflammatory. So basically we are going to make a drug in our lab and uh, this is also called salicylate. But uh, uh, never use, you can make this drug in your uh, lab but don't use, never use in the yourself it, because it have many side effects as well. So for to start the lab here we have our uh, glass pairs and this is the salicylic acid, acetic nitride and concentrated phosphoric acid. So here one more thing I'd like to inform you that uh, we are labeling each uh, bottles with this uh, color code and if they are yellow and red basically they are very important white storage must be never mixed general storage is like a gray green and orange inflammatory is red health hazard storage is blue relative oxidize is storage is yellow and then white is corrosive and contact hazard storage so these are uh, very corrosive acids so handle very careful and now let's uh, start our reaction so according to the procedure we need to uh, measure out these chemicals and add them together in the fume hood to prevent any uh, toxic or corrosive fumes so just a side note we want to make sure that the uh, this hood is above or, i'm sorry below the sash tag right here just to make sure that it's actually venting properly so first we're going to get five milliliters of the acetic anhydride
five drops of our phosphoric acid. five minutes and we're up to 90 degrees right now so we're gonna go ahead and lower it down just to 90 cool and then so 10 minutes in according to the procedure 10 minutes in we need to add two milliliters of water so that'll be here in about uh, four or five minutes um, so we'll go ahead and add this water here in just a minute So it's been uh, heated for about 10 minutes now. Uh, it's still like 87. So uh, now what we're gonna do is add two milliliters of water to uh, quench this reaction. So now we're just gonna let it heat for another five more minutes. Oh, it's already starting to boil a little bit. Turn the heat down a little bit. We'll let it heat for five more minutes um, and then we'll remove it from the heat and allow it to cool. five minutes after we added those two mils of water. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and turn off the stirring. Gonna get this guy out. So we're just gonna take it off the, off the heat. Make sure that's nice and tight. back down just to be safe. Now what we're gonna do is add 20 milliliters of water to fully stop the reaction. So you already see some precipitate forming. That's gonna be our, uh, that's gonna be our aspirin. So we're gonna let this cool down a little bit more. As it cools, we should be able to see some more crystals forming. Once it gets down to about room temperature, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the ice bath for a full like recrystallization. So before we do this vacuum filtration, we wanna make sure we remember to weigh out our filter paper. We've got 0.186 grams. So we'll write that down so we don't forget. So go ahead and put our filter paper in here. So we've allowed this to recrystallize. It took a little bit longer uh, than normal. It was about 15 minutes, uh, but we see some good crystals forming on the sides and bottom of the flask. So we're gonna, Not a white color. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on our suction. All white precipitate. We're gonna wet our filter paper using water. Just 
to get a good seal. Then we're gonna pour our product into here. Then we can scrape out anything stuck. Go ahead and wash with a little bit of water. I think that's it is smelling. Yeah. So oh, that got a lot of it. A lot of it is picked up. Yeah, we got quite a bit. Wash one more time with this last bit of water. So the flask is mostly empty. So, uh, according to the procedure, what we do now is turn off the vacuum. Let these crystals sit in about five milliliters of water just to help, that was quite five mils, just to kind of help uh, wash them a little bit. So we're gonna do this five times, just let them sit in a little bit of water. Uh, let them sit and then we'll uh, pull it through and then give it five more mils. We'll do this a total of three times. So add water and hold and then filter. Add hold and filter, right? Yeah. Let it sit for a minute. This just kind of helps get out any kind of anything. If there's any trapped phosphoric acid, having these washes like this kind of really helps get everything out. This will be our last little wash. Through. So I'll just turn it on high vacuum. We'll leave it here to just kind of help air dry for about five or ten minutes. It looks like a nice white powdery substance. Good. So it's been air drying under vacuum for about five minutes now. So we'll go ahead and uh, disconnect the hose. Turn off the vacuum. And then we're gonna need, need to get this filter paper onto this watch glass. Make sure we try to get all of the product that we can off the walls. Cool. So we'll go ahead and stick this in the oven for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, let it fully dry out, and then we can get a good mass for it. So we'll go ahead and stick this in here, and we'll check back in about 15 minutes. So we just got our aspirin out of the oven, so we're going to go ahead and get a mask for it. So I'm going to start by tearing this way boat. Cool, so it's nice and stable, so we'll hit tear. Sweet. So now what we're going to be able to do is just add this straight into here. Uh, 
and we want to try to get everything we can. So this is the mass of our aspirin plus the mass of our filter paper. So we gotta make sure we remember to subtract that out. So for your lab report, uh, the data that you need will all be on pages 84 and 85 in your manual. Um, make sure you calculate your theoretical yield, your percent purity, which we'll be going over in uh, the second video, and then your percent yield, that'll be based off of your percent purity. Um, and then in your conclusion, uh, again, just make sure you kind of talk about the experiment, how it went, uh, and describe it in general. Make sure you talk about your percent purity and what that means about like possible sources of error. Um, make sure you talk about the melting point that we give you, compare it to the literature melting point of both the product and salicylic acid, and then see if that makes sense with uh, the purity that you calculate. And then also, of course, discuss your percent yield. Uh, so this is our mass, this is our data that we got. Mass of filter paper was 0.186 grams. Uh, filter paper and the product was 0.2368 grams, and then our uh, melting point was 104 to 134. Hello, so in this uh, lab, as we have synthesized the aspirin, so second part of this aspirin is test the spectro spectrophotometric absorption of an aspirin sample. So what happened basically whenever we synthesize aspirin, so there is always a disalicyl, salicylate dianion, uh, left over or on the acted left so that makes impurity so we find out how much left or on the acted dye anion we have so we react with this uh, iron nitrate it make a iron salt which is called tetra aqua salicyl tro iron and which is the brown or violet color and have absorbance somewhere uh, 550 maximum so we we absorb and that absorbance value we was used to quantify how much impurity we have and then we subtract the purity to find out the purity. So that we are going to uh, complete in the next video of this uh, lab.